Hello, my friends, I'm Jean-Luc Traxel from Switzerland, and it's a great privilege to welcome you for this special live series about revival. The Lord has started something amazing that is starting to shake the nations of the world in a way we've never seen that before. And the good news is, it's just the beginning. And that's the reason today we're going to start this series <coughs> regarding revival. I will have the coming months different speakers, but mainly people who experience one of the revival that has marked the history, who were part or was even leading the, this revival, and it's going to be just <coughs> fantastic. But let's just tell me a few things uh, why we are doing that. Also, I want to welcome all the students of the School of Revival. You are today almost 1,000 students uh, from every region of France uh, and uh, every every district of France, but more than <laughs> 10 nations of Europe and even the board. So really welcome to the students, but welcome to those who are watching with us. Normally we are really live and we are using a software for that, that we can broadcast to the different channel. We had some technical issue and that's the reason I just recording that today with my special guest that I will introduce you in few minutes. But I would love first, really that we can be connected with what the Lord is doing and especially with the Bible. I would love to read a very important verses that will be really our base regarding what we're going to speak today, but also regarding what the Lord is doing. It's written in Acts uh, of the Apostle in chapter 2, verse 17. It says, in the last days. And even if you are not a prophet, I'm telling you, we are really in the last days. And that's what God says. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see vision and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will <coughs> prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before the great and glorious days of the day of the Lord arrives. And that's part of what's going to happen. The Lord is coming very soon, very soon back. And then it's written, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I would love to pray with you that the Holy Spirit may come to this live stream and that he can touch you in a wonderful way. Holy Spirit, you know how we love you. You are our best friends. And you are not only the presence of God, but you are the power, you are the fire. You are the spirit of revival. And we want to welcome you today for this season, for these last days. And we want to embrace what you want to do for us in Jesus name. Or oh, touch the viewers today and the coming days as they're going to see that on YouTube and the different channel. Visit them and may they become yes. the flames on fire. In Jesus name we pray and we ask. So friends, again, welcome to all those who are just joining <coughs> this live stream. Like I said. We are not uh, in life because we had technical issues, so we recorded a few, few hours before the live that will happen tonight. And we are very grateful to welcome you from all around the world. The world. For those who follow us live, normally I like to know from which country you are coming. So please put it on the chat. We would love to see that. I will follow that tonight and read it. So please just write from which city or which region you are watching this live. And we really want to welcome you. Like I said, this uh, uh, special live tonight, it's, uh, it's the beginning, the start of a series. Uh, regarding revival. I'm going to have every month a special guest who experienced a revival or even was leading a revival. 
And the purpose of that is to help us to embrace what the Lord is doing today. In the beginning <clears throat> of the year, as I am privileged to travel worldwide, it was a great joy to see in so many places around the world that the first signs of a powerful revival has started. And as I'm traveling, seeing that, I say, Lord, how, what do we need to do? And I remember that was in January, as was in Melbourne, the exact place where Smith Wigglesworth was preaching and um, Amy, uh, Amy Simple MacPherson and all these famous preacher years ago were there and where the revival started in Melbourne with half million of crowd. It was a huge revival. <laughs> I was just there and the same spirit hit the place. The people came, people queuing out outside thousands of people something has just started in melbourne to my very good friend cory turner from Newma church who actually was gonna be also one of the speaker of the revival school i was there on the floor crying i said lord i know you created me for this revival that's coming the greatest revival in the history to reach the harvest of <coughs> millions of souls that's what the lord promised and I was there on the floor and I said, Lord, what do I need to do? And the Lord said, I want to start a school. Now to make the long story short, because you can see that on some of the life, I recently done it uh, and you can see the whole explanation, but it's really an introduction for this series. That's the reason I take this time. I came back in Switzerland uh, and the Lord said, you need to go to visit your dear friend, Gary Keller. Gary Keller was uh, becoming old, I know him since here as a revivalist, a father in Switzerland for many ministries and churches, but also for our nation. And I call his wife. I say, Lilo, I need to visit your husband. And she say, well, he's not able to meet. He's uh, very, not well at this time. I say, I need to talk to him because I know that the Lord will call him back to heaven. And to make this long story short, in March, I was able to go to his place. I cancel all the meetings because I know the Lord called me to do that. Because he said, if you go there, you will receive an impartation the blessing of a father, but also a specific word coming from heaven. I arrived to the place over there, close to Winterthur. The Holy Spirit came over us. The glory of God was on this room. And I said, Gary, you need to tell me something. So we were talking, exchanging, sharing our heart. But that's the main things before I introduce the guest of today. I said, Gary, tell me what you have seen in heaven. He said, I've been these last days few times in heaven. And I have seen something I've never seen before. And then he started to cry. He said, I was in heaven. I saw the Lord. He was no more on his seat. He was up, standing up having on his hand, on his arm, a huge jar. And on this jar, it was a river. It was a liquid fire <clears throat> for this last revival. And he said, Jean-Luc, the good news is the Lord is up. And he has started now to pour out this river of liquid fire for the greatest revival in the history. It has started. I said, Gary, what do we need to do? And he said, please tell to my people to get ready to open their eyes to what the Lord has started to do and to be like Simeon. Simeon was the man who welcomed the baby Jesus. Jesus at that time was not the great savior, was not the big Jesus. He was a baby Jesus. But Simon had the capacity by God's grace to welcome the baby, to bless the baby and then to allow the baby to grow and to become in full maturity our Lord and Savior. And Gary said, that's exactly what the Lord wants to do today. Tell the people, tell my <laughs> church to welcome the spirit of revival, to welcome the first beginning that is not big yet, but it has started. And if you have the capacity to welcome in, to manage it in a good way that it can grow and increase, it will grow and increase, increase and it will become the greatest revival in the history. And that's the reason <laughs> the Lord says, start this school of revival. I started 
And we are today about 1,000 students from every region of France, every district of France, and 10 nations of Europe. And uh, if you are not yet in connection with this school, I have a good news. You can still record today. Come in Paris face to face. We have the most amazing speakers having the spirit of revival like Bill Johnson, Claudio Friedson, Cash Luna from Guatemala, Corey Turner from uh, Australia, Catherine Runala from Australia, and many more. And this <coughs> thing is happen in the unity of Christian. It's not just the Pentecostal churches, but it's really in unity, the body of Christ, with people who are hungry and thirsty. People are traveling the night or the day before to come at this school to help you to embrace the spirit of revival, but also to help you how to build the altar, how to develop, how to manage that. And that's the reason I invite you to be sure to be part of this school. Go to the website, healing-ministries.org, record the good news also. If you record, register yourself, you can invite two more people. You find all the information on that. And if you cannot come face to face, which I can understand, you are living maybe far away, you don't have the finances, the good news is you can follow online, but you need to register as well. So today, it's really a great privilege as I have a special guest, the first guest, one of a very good friend since many years that I met in Mozambique to my mother, spiritual mother, Heidi Baker. He's a man of fire and I, I don't want to forget anything. So that's the reason I want to read the bio that my people prepare for tonight. The island of Indonesia experienced what some feel was one of the greatest revivals in the 20th century, which has led millions of people <coughs> to Christ. Meltari, a young man of just 18, when this period of revival began, witnessed amazing miracles of the same nature as those in the Bible. Water turned to wine, the dead resurrected, poisons rendered ineffective and many healings and miracles. Meltari became a well-known evangelist and missionary to the world from Timor, authoring the best-selling book, Like a Mighty Wind, that you need to read, my friend. I read it when I was a little boy, which documents the amazing events of the spiritual revival in Asia. Here is an excerpt from this book. <coughs> While we were praying, the Holy Spirit came as on the day of the Pentecost. Then I heard the toxin sound. Across the street from our church was the police station and the fire alarm. The officer had seen that our building was on fire and had sounded the alarm. When they got to the church, they saw the flames. The church wasn't on fire. It was a natural fire. It was God's fire they were seeing, and they were so gripped by it that many surrendered to Jesus Christ and received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. My friend, today I have the great joy and the great <coughs> privilege to welcome my dear friends, the revivalist Mel Tari from Indonesia. <coughs> Hello, Brother Mel. Hey, Brother John, it's a pleasure to be with you and all the people that are watching. And I want to say something here. The Bible, Isaiah said, darkness will cover the earth, deep darkness the people. But for the people of God, it is not the time to be intimidated. It is not the time to be afraid. It is not the time to run away. It is not the time to uh, worry, but it is the time to rise because the glory of the Lord a sign upon each one of us. And this is the best time for the church of Jesus Christ in all generations. This is the best generation of all because I believe this is the grand finale generation where we are going to see the greatest move of the Holy Spirit. So I'm so glad, Brother John Luke, that you are setting up this program. You are having the school. You are inviting the people not only to come 
and listen to the story of what happened in our lives and in my life, but to embrace the very presence of the fire of the Holy Spirit. And I'm honored to be with you here today. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord. Thanks so much, Brother Mel, for this amazing introduction. And by the way, I welcome all those who just tune in or just join through Facebook or the different channel, TV channel, including YouTube. So welcome. Be sure also to follow like the YouTube channel. Very important that you follow because more series will come like today where I will have special guests who experience revival, past revival, who are even leading some of the revival, like the Bay Revival or the Toronto Revival and many others. It's just amazing. But tonight we are so excited to hear about you, Brother Mel. And I, let me just say to the viewers, it's not just a show. I do believe something will happen to you today, to your life, your family, and your church. It will be an impartation of what the Lord has done in the past. He wants to do it again. So I invite mm -hmm. you to open your spirit. Invite friends. Share the link to your social medias. Invite people to the WhatsApp group or your database to be sure to get in connection of what the Lord will do today to this show, the spirit of revival. So Brother Mel, it will be so amazing if we can start, if you can explain with your own words how this revival started in your own nation. Well, Brother John, <clears throat> let me put it this way. If Apostle John come to your house or to your church and tell you about the miracle that he experienced, the first one that Jesus did, turning water into wine. I believe you will be very excited about it because he was the living witness of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. Or Apostle Peter came and he testified in your church or in this program about how he walked on water when Jesus asked him to step out of the boat. I believe you and I will be very excited to hear that personal testimony. Tonight, I want to tell you something. Not to brag, but it is the fact and the reality of what Jesus has done. I am a living witness of what God has done in our generation. Peter and Paul were the living witness in their time. I am a living witness in this generation of who Jesus is. John said in John chapter 20, he told about the miracles that has happened. And he said, Jesus did many, many great things at that time, but I'm telling you a few of them. And the reason is, like I always tell people, miracles doesn't happen to entertain the saints. According to John, the miracles happen so that when people hear the testimony, they will know that Jesus is the Messiah. And by knowing that, they will receive life and life eternal. So the reason I'm answering your question here, Brother John, is not to entertain the students and the people out there. And they will say, wow, well, what a great story. What a wonderful story. That is missing the point. The testimony of the miracles of Jesus serve one purpose, according to John, so that we will come to know Jesus, the Messiah, and by knowing him, we receive eternal life. Why? Because this life is temporary. Only heaven is eternal. And Jesus came to bring us eternal life. Now, when we receive eternal life, the Holy Spirit will impact this present life. And he will release his power. That is why I'm here. I'm going to tell you, Brother John, I'm going to tell your uh, students and our friends out there from all over the world. I have seen and I have tasted Jesus change water unto wine. I have seen with my own eyes, he raised the dead. I have seen him make the blind to see and the crippled to walk and miracles that many have only read in the Bible. I am here to tell you that those miracles are real because I'm a living witness of what Jesus has done. So to answer your question, it was 58 years ago, in September 1965, the Holy Spirit visited my little church, like the Dutch Reformed Church. 
I always tell the American audience, and when I wrote in my book, Like a Mighty Wind, is I said the Presbyterian Church. But actually, to be more precise, it is the Dutch Reformed Church in Indonesia. And I want to say this because I want to encourage my people, in um, my friends in Switzerland, and this is you as well, Brother John Luke, you need to grasp this. This was the uh, Reformation from Germany, where the gospel came to uh, Geneva. And that is how uh, the revival, uh, the gentleman uh, Calvin uh, and his people at his generation, the Swiss people, they embraced the work of the Holy Spirit. And Calvin sent the missionaries, the reformers to Holland. And that is how the Dutch Reformed Church and the Bible reached Holland. And the people in Holland many years ago sent the gospel to Indonesia and about a hundred years ago, it reached my island, the island of Timor. So you see, the Holy Spirit is working and connecting us in many different ways. So today, from the island of Timor, I'm speaking to you, Brother John Luke. I know the desire of your heart and the people from France and from Holland and Switzerland and whoever that are listening now. From the island of Indonesia, that the gospel came from Europe. I am representing the church in Indonesia. And I want to tell the European people and the people in the world, Jesus is alive. He has changed water into wine, not only once or twice, but many, many times in my little island that we use the wine for the communion service. We have seen the miracles that God has done. And the reason is not only to excite us and to entertain us, but to challenge us to know this Jesus that has come from heaven, the only one that heaven has ever sent. He was born, crucified, he died, he was buried. Oh, but brother John, look, you know, he rose back again from the dead. And in John chapter 20, on the night of resurrection, when the disciples were together, the Bible said all of a sudden, he was there among them. You see, the disciples were in the lockdown. The doors were locked. We are not the only one who experienced the COVID lockdown in our generation. People, the disciples were the first, ex the one who experienced the lockdown. But in the midst of the lockdown, they have resurrected Christ. The one that has changed water into wine before. The one that multiplied the food. The one that has done great miracles before his resurrection. Ah, now he is a resurrected Christ. He stood among them and he said, Shalom. Peace be unto you. And in the world that we are living in today, where there are wars and trouble everywhere, in the nations, but also in our life, I want to speak to the people who are listening now. If you are there, my friend, and you feel like you are in fear, you feel like uh, maybe you are sick, you feel like you don't know what's happening in this world today, listen to the voice, the voice of the Master. Jesus is saying to you today, Shalom, peace, be healed. Receive your salvation. And if you haven't received Jesus as your own personal Savior, you can do it now by simply saying, I embrace you, Lord Jesus, the gift of the Father from heaven for my salvation and forgiveness and eternal life. And if you have known Jesus, now is the time to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because John the Baptist said, I baptize you unto water. But he, Jesus, that will come after me will baptize you, immerse you unto the Holy Ghost and fire. So that night on September 1965, while we are gathering together in the church, having a little prayer meeting, the fire of God came down like the introduction that Brother John was reading to you here a minute ago. And so we were filled with the Holy Ghost. People were speaking in another language. A sister friend of mine that living just, oh, less than a mile down from my little heart. She received the Holy Spirit and she spoke in perfect English. And I knew that that has to be a miracle because she has never gone to school. She couldn't speak Indonesian, which is our national language. She only speak the local tribal language, Timorese. But that night when she was filled with the Holy Ghost, she stood up and praised God in perfect English. Others were praising God in other language. Sounds like German, sounds like Hebrew in other language. And that was the beginning of the great revival 58 years ago. It was the, almost the exact replica of what happened in the book of uh, Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Ghost came upon the disciples. It was an exciting experience. But Brother John, I need to tell you something. 
when people hear this testimony, they get excited. They say, oh, it is wonderful. But I want to give you the next step that must follow the infilling of the Holy Spirit. The Lord spoke to us that night and said, tomorrow morning, that was about 10 o'clock at night. You, I'm going to choose some of you now. And that night he chose 21 people, including my sister. And he said, tomorrow morning, ah, you must go to the villages and share this Jesus. Because you see, Brother John Luke, we have a little misunderstanding about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We thought when we received the Holy Spirit, according to Acts chapter 1, verse 8, we will receive power. That's true. But our thought was the power to heal, the power to see miracles, the power to see great provision and blessings in our life. Yes, that is also the uh, power of the Holy Spirit. But the power that Jesus was talking about in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, is the power to become a witness. It is the power to open our mouth and not only praise God in tongues, but begin to tell the world that are lost out there about Jesus. Let me prove the point. After the disciples received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the book of John chapter 2, what happened? An hour or two later, almost right away, Peter stood up and witnessed about Jesus, the one that resurrected that he was a living witness about, uh, uh, about it. And you know what happened? 3,000 people were born again that day. 5,000 the next day or the next week or so. So the power and the presence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, first and foremost, is so that we can become the witness, so that the laws out there, there are billions of them today in this generation. Somebody need to tell them about Jesus so that they can be born again. So they can receive eternal life and know that Jesus, the Messiah, is the Son of God. And when we do that, ah, now we can see the great salvation, the great harvest coming in. I believe, Brother John, look, that the revival you're talking about is not the revival to excite the church only. It's not to make the saints out there, oh, saying hallelujah and manifesting joy. It's good if that happened. But it is to give us the power to witness, to reach the lost billion out there with the gospel. And when we do that, now come Mark chapter 16. They went everywhere preaching the gospel. And God confirmed the word of Jesus. They're preaching about Jesus with signs and wonders following. We made a mistake in the church. We look for miracles. And I always tell people, and I want to tell you, student, remember this. If you look for miracles, you'll never find it. But if you pursue Jesus, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and receive the power to witness from your neighbors, to your schools, to the nations, to whoever God brought your way, then as you proclaim uh, Jesus, as you release the Holy Spirit to them, then you are going to see heaven confirm the word that you share with the people with power. And you can see people raised from the dead as God so choose and so directed. You can see the blind healed and the crippled uh, walk. I have seen that in my life. Like I told you a minute ago, I am the living witness of what Jesus and the Holy Spirit is doing in this generation. But we got to follow the order how God is doing it. First, we need to embrace Jesus and know him as our Messiah and our Savior. Receive him in our life. And the next step, like it happened in my church, we must receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. Then we follow the third step. We begin to go out and share Jesus with others. We can't just rejoice in our churches and have an all-night prayer meeting, have manifestation in the floor and giving each other a high five. Those are good, but that isn't the reason the Holy Spirit is given. You can do all that without the Holy Spirit. But when the Holy Spirit come and fill you, my friend, it is to propel you to proclaim to the nations and to your neighbors and to your laws who Jesus is. And as you do that, that is when you're going to see heaven release the miracles. Like, Brother John, look, I need to tell you this. You asked me the question. You know, the next morning, people, the first 21 went to the village and preached the gospel. My sister was there. They came back about a week later, and they said on that week they were there, 300 people accepted the Lord. There are people who came uh, carried by other people. They were healed that night. They never saw that. 
but God did it in the beginning of that revival. As a matter of fact, my aunt, who was a pastor's wife in that village, they didn't have enough food to feed the 21 plus, plus the elders that were in the church that night. She only had four little cassava root, tapioca root. But God spoke to him and said, cook it and I will multiply it. And God did. He did the miracle of multiplication. And my sister and the people were having enough food to eat to continue to preach the gospel. And from there, many other te team went all over from the little village that the revival started. In the first six months, we have 70 teams, meaning 70 groups that go everywhere and preach the gospel. As a result, let me give you this little statistic, Brother John, because this will encourage the people out there. The Dutch missionaries from Holland, you know, encouraged by Calvin that sent the missionaries their way. They came to my country and for 60 years, they preached the gospel. 80,000 people joined the church. Wonderful. But the night the Holy Ghost came down with fire and the people went out the next day. Let me tell you something. You are following this school. A thousand of you are following this school. That is great. But this school is not just for you to feel like you know something you didn't know before. It is not for your mind to embrace a new knowledge. It is for your heart to come on fire so that you can have passion for Jesus like you have never had before. So you can have passion for the laws that you have never had before. So you can begin after this school, even after tonight. You go over to your neighbors. You go to your friends from church. You go to your friends from universities. You go to people that have never heard Jesus and tell them about Jesus. Don't wait until you graduate from this school a year from now. Peter didn't wait after he was filled with the Holy Ghost, before the Bible school, before all these wonderful programs like you have, he went out right away and 3,000 people come to Jesus. So my question to you is that, why do you wait until then? Of course, you can have the program like this to listen. You can learn more. Of course, you can go to the Bible school or the theological seminary if the Lord lead you in the coming days. But ladies and gentlemen, if you want my witness, Brother Luke asked me the question. The night the Holy Ghost came down, the next day we went out and preached the gospel. And you know what happened? In the first six months, 80 people embraced Jesus. Now, the Dutch missionaries for 60 years. You came, said 80,000 80, people. 80,000. 80, 60 years. But in six months, by the power of the Holy Ghost, 80,000 came to Jesus. And of course, after that, this last 58 years, we have seen millions and millions and millions come to Jesus. And I'm excited, ladies and gentlemen. Brother John Luke, encourage the people later when you translate this program and send it out. Tell them this. This is the grand finale generation. This is the generation that will see the greatest harvest that the church has ever seen. This is the generation that will see the release of the power of God unprecedented. But in order to see the release of the power of God, it can happen by we having our own Bible study. We having our own prayer meeting among those believers that are already on their way to heaven. If that happened, why God sent his power to you and I who are already to go to heaven? It's not needed. That is not the way the Holy Ghost works. He wants to send his power in order to prove to the lost that you and I are preaching to that Jesus is alive. He is resurrected. And because of that, he will release the miracle. Hallelujah. I want to say it again. If you look for the miracles, you'll never find it. But if you pursue Jesus and you pursue the loss, heaven will release the miracle. And you're going to see the move of the Holy Spirit unprecedented in this generation. Let me tell you one thing, Brother John Luke. I know you have a question there, but let me tell you quickly. People ask me the question when they read like a mighty wind. Oh, Mel, you walk in water. Oh, everybody's so excited because there's nobody in this generation that walk in water but Mel Tari and his friends. Ah, oh, that is a wrong way to see it. We didn't uh, look uh, for the miracle to walk in water. Jesus told us to go to the region in the other side. The loss to him. And as we are walking to that region, we have to cross the river. And the river was 30, 10 meters deep and we want to wait. But Jesus said, go now. So we did in obeying Jesus. 
in having passion for Jesus and his command, in having passion for the laws outside, uh, in the other side of the river, we cross. The water never come any higher than our knees. We got to the other side. Somebody was raised from the dead. 20 plus thousand people received Jesus there. And on our way back, pastor in this side of the river, my uncle, who said, hey, you guys walk on river, on the river, on water uh, a month ago. We said, how do you know we walk on water? We didn't walk in water. He said, oh, you did. Because I saw you cross over. And when you, when you got to the other side, we tried to follow your step. On, on the first step, we almost drowned because the water was 10 meters deep. So my pastor said, my uncle pastor said, you must have walked in water. He said, how does it feel? I said, I don't have a clue. I don't know how it feels because we went looking for miracles. We were looking for the loss because our passion for Jesus and obeying his command. So people gave me the credit that Brother Mel and his friends walk in water. Ladies and gentlemen, a friend of mine asked me the question, how does it feel, Brother Mel, to walk in water? I don't have a clue. I wish I knew that we're walking on water. I could have taken my uh, iPhone. Now, in those days, 50 years ago, there's no iPhone. I could have taken a selfie. I couldn't have taken an Instagram a picture and give it to you. Everybody, it will go viral and everybody will be excited. But you see, it wasn't the miracle that we're looking for. It was obeying Jesus and the laws. And by doing so, he released the miracle when, he, when we need it. So I'm here. Brother John Luke, I want to tell you people here, it is good that they follow the school. It is good that they seek for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But the reason is not for ourselves. It's not for our group to get excited. It is to reach the lost and bring in the great harvest for the glory of Jesus. Because I am a witness of what the Holy Ghost and Jesus can and have done in this generation. And I believe that the students that are following this school those who are listening in this program, if you seek Jesus, embrace him and allow him to fill you with the Holy Ghost and you obey him to reach the lost from your neighbors to your nations, we are going to see the greatest revival ever because this is the grand finale generation. Brother John, take it from there, please. Oh, Brother Mel, what a blessing you are. We can feel this flame of fire on your life. And by the way, I want to welcome all those who just joined this live, special live stream regarding revival. Actually, it's the beginning of a series. Every month, we're going to have that on YouTube. So that's the re reason you need to subscribe so you can follow what will happen. We'll have amazing friends from around the world who experience revival like Brother Mel. And it's the purpose is not just to get excited, but it's to help you to embrace what the Holy Spirit has started for us today. Revival is now. Revival has, starting, has started. It's a small beginning, but it will grow and it will be so wonderful. And that's the reason we have this revival school. We just started a few weeks ago in Paris face to face with about a thousand students from every region and district of France, but also people from more than 10 nations of of Europe. So be sure we still have few days. You can register to come to this school. Again, it's not just to have fun together, even if we have, but it's really to embrace the spirit of revival, to pray, to fast, to get ready, to learn how to fight this battle. And like Brother Mel just shared, we want to equip you that you can go to your regions and cities and take these places for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the good news is what the Lord has done in Timor, he wants to do it in your place, in Belgium, in Spain, in Portugal, everywhere in Europe, and even to other nations of the world. So be sure to register. You can invite friends as well. And if you cannot come face to face, which is sad, but the good news is you can follow that online. And it's the last days to register for this call. But now today, let's go back to this life with Brother Mel Tari from Timor, Indonesia, who experienced one of the greatest revival in the history. Brother Mel, 
I've received different questions from the students. And I would love to ask you some of these questions. We will have to do a bit shorter than I was thinking because we are almost at the end, but I have many questions. One of the questions is how God did prepare you for this revival? Well, let me, let me answer that question. When I was 16 years old, I was sick with malaria. I took medication and I prayed for healing. But for four years, I was still sick until one day I knelt down in the dirt floor in my little hut in the little village. And I said to the Lord, Lord, how come the Bible said, ask and you shall receive? I've asked for four years and I haven't received yet. I'm still sick with malaria. And the Lord opened my eyes to see. And he said, Mel, you have gone to church for 19 years, but your problem is you're not a Christian. You're not my child yet. I said, why? I've gone to church every week since I can remember. And he said, the Holy Spirit spoke to me clearly. Going to church is good. But if you go to the barn, you don't become a cow by going to the barn. You can go to church and you don't become a Christian by going to church and reading the Bible. You have to be born again from the mother cow in order to become a cow. Jesus told Nicodemus, you got to be born again. You have to come to a personal relationship with Jesus. Then you will become the child of God. And that day, the first time in my life, I opened my heart and I embraced Jesus. But the funny part, Brother John, look is this. I embraced Jesus. I forget to ask him to heal me from the malaria. It was stupid, but I forgot. But you know what? The next month, I realized that there's no more malaria. The next year, there's no more malaria. And today, 58 years later, there's still no malaria. You know why? I didn't ask for healing, but I embraced Jesus. When I embraced Jesus, I embraced the healer. Because Jesus is the one that came from heaven. He is the healer. If you embrace Jesus, you embrace the deliverer. And the deliverance will be yours. If you embrace Jesus, you embrace the Redeemer and redemption will be yours. When you embrace Jesus, you embrace the Prince of Peace and peace will be yours. When you embrace Jesus, you embrace the God who is love and love will over overwhelm you. It is the person of Jesus that we need to embrace. And then after that, we can receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit, like I just told you. And Brother John, look, I know you want that question. The key is to come to embrace Jesus. And then secondly, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, like the disciples in the book of John, chap uh, the book of Acts, chapter 2. But Jesus told them, wait until you receive. But today you don't have to wait. You can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit now. Brother John and I will play, pray with you in a minute here. But in the book of Acts, chapter 13. Now, this is one thing that the Lord put in my heart for your school here. Chapter 13. The Holy Spirit said to the church, separate from me Barnabas and Saul, meaning the Apostle Paul, because I will send them to the nations, to the Gentiles. You see, the Holy Spirit is the one who set apart, and I pray that he will set all of you apart here, each one of you, and he will send you to your neighbors and to the nations. The Holy Spirit sent them. And so this is what the Holy Spirit is going to do in this generation. He will release the fire. But the fire is not going to do you any good if you keep it to yourself. Back in the village, if we have a little fire, it is only to cook the food for ourselves. But if you want a big fire, you have to let the fire spread. If you want just uh, go to the well and get water to drink, that is good. But if you allow the Holy Spirit to rise, like Jesus said, and become rivers of living water, means it will flow and reach others in the desert. If you keep the Holy Spirit to yourself, you'll have a little blessing. But if you release the Holy Spirit and reach the lost, that is when we're going to see the great move of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Acts chapter 13 is for the church today. Separate from me. Part of us and Paul. Well, that was 2,000 years ago. But for today, separate from me. Brother John, look. All, everybody. Marissa here. Everybody. Patrick. Everybody that are watching here. You must be set apart by the Holy Spirit. For what? Tell them about Jesus and see this great harvest and the great move in this generation. Amen. That's a long way to answer your question there, uh, Brother John Luke. But today, before we run out of time, if you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I want you to do two things. Take your left hand and put it in your heart. 
your left hand on your heart. And then, Brad John, look, you got to put your left hand on your heart. Yeah. I want them to see that you're doing it. <laughs> and raise your right hand. And I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, as they put the left hand in their heart, they embrace you. Jesus, come into their life. Those who haven't, now they receive you. Those who have, they just confirm and reconfirm their love and dedication to you. And as they raise the right hand, right now, I pray in the name of Jesus, release to them the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Receive the Holy Spirit and fire right now in your life. And as you receive the Holy Spirit and fire, let him speak to you and release you to bring Jesus to the multitude who are lost. And as you do so, heaven will release his power and his miracles because he who is Alpha and Omega, the creator of the universe, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the word that has become uh, flesh and live among us and have sent his Holy Spirit is releasing his power. And you're going to see people by the millions come to know Jesus in the nation at this time. As I pray and release to you the full fire of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen, amen and amen. Amen and Thank amen. You so much. Thank you so, so much. And if you never gave your life to Jesus and tonight you just feel or you answer this altar call to give your life to Jesus, this is really the day to repent of your sin, Put your faith in Jesus, and I would love you put on the chat, I give my life to Jesus, or I receive Jesus, I repent of my sin. I want you put that on the chat, but also go to our website. We want to send you a free booklet to help you to walk with the Lord. Brother Mel, I have so many questions, so, and I need to come back to one of those who is coming by many. It's practically, what have you done before this day in September 1965, where this fire came to your place. And I would love if you can give just some tip. People said, did you pray or was it a prayer fasting meeting? What have you done that suddenly the fire came? I will answer it by quoting John chapter 7. When Jesus said, on the last day, he stood up. You remember that uh, a pastor friend of yours that saw God was not standing. He was stand, uh, sitting. He was standing up. That's important. And he has that fire need to be uh, ready to be poured out. On the last day, Jesus stood up. These are the last days for the church. This is the grand finale generation. And he stood up in John chapter 7. And this is what Jesus said. Anybody who is Anybody? Let them come to me. Drink. We Anybody didn't who... hear. We didn't hear. What did you say? Anybody? Anybody who is thirsty. Thirsty. Who is thirsty. Let them come to me and drink. Because when they drink of the Holy Spirit, out of the innermost being, shall flow rivers of living water. And Jesus is saying, that the river of the living water, the fire of the revival, the wind of the Holy Spirit will blow in our time. The fire will spread. The river will flow. Here is the one simple requirement to answer your question. Are you thirsty? Are you desiring? Are you desperate for the presence of the Holy Spirit? Are you loving Jesus better today than you were yesterday? Are you seeking Jesus with all your heart? Are you? Oh, that night I know we were thirsty. We're yeah. not thirsty for the miracles. We're thirsty for the presence of Jesus. Yes. We are thirsty for the Holy Spirit. We are thirsty. We desire. We are desperate to see the lost come to the kingdom. And so that night we received the grace of the fire of the Holy Spirit. And the next day, the next day we went out. Because of that passion for the laws and oh, yeah. that passion for the laws to come to know Jesus. We are desperate. So we didn't have car to drive or bicycles to take or horse to ride to go anywhere. We walk from village to village. We walk. Later on, we take a little boat to go to another island. 58 years later, travel all over the world. I came from the smallest and the poorest island in the world. But my Jesus, oh, don't ever underestimate him. Because when he fills you with the Holy Ghost, 
the Holy Ghost have the power and will propel you to accomplish the mission. So this last 58 years, I've traveled all over the world. I've been with you, Brother John. Look in your church there in Switzerland. I've seen you in Mozambique. And today, by the grace of God, with the new technology, I'm able to speak to many of you who are listening right now. And I want to tell you, my friend, unless you are thirsty, unless you are desperate, you wouldn't drink of this river of life. Amen. But if you're thirsty, if you're desperate, and you open your life, you drink from this water of life. Jesus promised it will flow out of you like Amen. rivers of living water. And the reason river is flowing is so that it can bring life to the desert. It bring harvest to the places where the river is growing. Amen. Christianity, ladies and gentlemen, is not just for you and I. To find Jesus and go to heaven. That's good. But we got to go there with as many people as we can. The more, the better. Like we said here in America, the more, the merrier, the happier, the greater. Reach others with Jesus. Because that was the reason the Holy Spirit is given. Jesus said, you shall receive power so that you become my witness. So go unto all the world and preach the gospel. And he Amen. said, I will be with you. Oh, if we have time, I can tell you the stories about how the uh, Jesus um, make the blind to see uh, how the people that come to the meeting sitting in the wheelchair and Jesus passed by and they were healed instantly without anybody uh, laying hands on them. Oh, laying hands on the, of them is good. But Jesus can do it without you and me as we bring his presence to the people. I have seen my shadow reach other peoples and they were instantly healed. Ladies and gentlemen, embrace Jesus. If you are sick right now, I want to release to you Shalom. Be healed in the name Amen. of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Rise and walk. Cancer be gone. Any disease in your body be gone right now and receive the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus Christ by the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost. You can feel it flowing in your body right now and the doctors will tell you tomorrow that that sickness, that cancer, whatever that is in your body, whatever it is, is gone because of the presence and the power of the mighty name of Jesus and the presence of the Holy Ghost and fire within you right now in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord Jesus. And I pray for this school that many will not only listen to the testimonies of those who have experienced revival, but let them come straight to Jesus. My story is good, but Jesus is better. So come to Jesus with hunger, with thirst. Drink of this water of life. Drink of the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Ghost Bless you and propel you unto your destiny because Jesus is your savior, but he's also the baptizer unto the Holy Ghost. So receive him. Let him fill you with the Holy Ghost and then obey him. He will speak to you. He will tell you to go to your neighbors, to your universities, or wherever you are. And wherever you go, as you proclaim Jesus, heaven will move and people will see his glory. Darkness cover the earth, according to Isaiah. But Isaiah saw God spoke and said, Rise, because the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And I speak to all of you who are listening here, Rise, because the glory of God and the fire of the Holy Ghost has enveloped you. Rise and go, because this is your privilege. This is our time. And this is the best time to be alive in the world today for the glory of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Friends, you are just watching live uh, this amazing live stream regarding revival. Actually, it's the beginning, the first one of a series about revival. I will have guest speakers from around the world, like Brother Mel, who experienced a revival in his own nation that changed the whole nation. And it's what the Lord has done in the past, uh, is what the Lord wants to do for you. And that's the first verse of this series. Uh, but also, I invite you to be part of this revival school. It's the last day that you can still register after we will close that uh, you can come in paris uh, is what i say if you go to the the videos and the things that i've done 
one of the key ingredients Brother Mel just shared today where the Lord is moving in many places in the world and it's the beginning of this new revival. It will be the greatest. Uh, the main common things uh, is this hunger and thirst for the Lord. Uh, and that's why I invite you, if you are really hungry and thirsty, there is no, no distance. No, I mean, it's no not a complication to take a flight or train to come in Paris. Uh, I didn't do to my own cities or villages in Switzerland. The Lord said, do it in Paris. So myself, it takes me a lot of energy and it's more complicated for me, but I'm so hungry. I, I obey the Lord every month. I go in Paris. So be sure to join. It's now you go, you register, you can invite friends. Some people organize buses. They are traveling the night. And it's just amazing. We started, we already had the first session. It was explosive. You have no, no, that's just 5 p.m. here in Switzerland. And I declare Europe shall be saved as tens Amen. of thousands of people declare that i declare now as it's recording it's going to be live tonight at eight i declare europe shall be saved germany france spain all europe shall be saved in jesus name so be sure to register if you can really not come online you can on face to face sorry in paris you can register online brother mel i want five more minutes i know the time is over but uh, I would love if you can share a little bit about this fire who became visible for the unsaved. And what was this experience? Also, there were so many other questions like, uh, how did you accompany the growth in terms of structure, in terms of themes? Uh, what challenges and obstacles did you encounter? Also, what role did the leaders play in the revival? So there is all this kind of question if we can bring a conclusion. But my main thing is if you can share about this fire who came visible, what was it? Well, Brother John, that night when the Holy Ghost came, like it was in the book of Acts chapter 2, the wind blew and the fire came to the disciples. While we were praying inside the building that night, I heard the sound like a mighty wind. You so heard I was it. looking around. Mm. I heard it. And I was looking around and said, where is this wind? Well, can't see it. I can sense it. I can hear it. But it, everything was quiet. Then all of a sudden, as I look around, I saw little flames, like a little candlelight, little flames of fire sitting in everybody's head. And I was thinking to myself, what is this fire? And then all of a sudden I heard the fire alarm in the police station just, just across the street. I found out two days later, the police game man that rang the fire alarm. He said that night as he was looking toward the church, the church he saw a big flame outside on top of the church and he was afraid that the church is going to be burned down so he rang the fire alarm people came by the thousand from all over the village and when they got to the church there is no natural fire but it was the fire of the holy spirit and we were filled with the holy spirit and from there we went to the next neighbor to the next village to the next island and 58 years later we're still here and brother john luke i want to tell you that fire of the Holy Spirit is here. And I want to tell the people here. Somebody just texted me the other day, a prophet friend of mine. And he said, Mel, what God has done before, he will do it again. The great Catherine Kuhlman that has passed away. I like the song that she always plays in one of her crusades. It is no secret what God can do. Mm -hmm. What he's done for others, he'll do for you and through you. What God has done before, he will do it again. You are the generation that will see it happen. Yes, we as leaders need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, but encourage okay. others. Let me tell you something. Becoming a leader doesn't mean you do it alone. The time for the long rangers is gone. It is the time to encourage the next generation. The people in the pews for so many years, the preacher preach alone and pray alone for others. That was good, but it's not for now. Now we need to encourage the people in the pews. We need to encourage the people in the Sunday school, even the little children. We need to encourage them to go out. We have seen children in my island who are filled with the Holy Ghost and they pray for the sick and the sick were healed. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the time to let the church to go out. 
we cannot keep Jesus within the four walls of our buildings. We are the temple of the living God. Wherever we go, we need to release the Holy Spirit. Yes, we need leaders. Yes, we need everybody to do their part. But I'm more interested, as I told Brother John Luke here, I want to encourage this young generation, this new generation, to rise and do their part. Oh, yes, Martin Luther and Calvin was here 500 years ago, whenever that was. It was good when they do. But the time for one Martin Luther alone is gone. The time for one Calvin alone is gone. Now is the time for the body of Christ, for the people to rise. That is why, Brother John, look, I like the fact that you have the school. Sometime in the future, maybe next year, I will fly to Paris because I want to meet those students of yours there and pray for them and speak to them. I can answer the question then. But for now, it is important that they embrace Jesus. Don't look for the miracle. Look for the miracle worker. Don't look for the, uh, this and that to excite you. Look for the most exciting one of all. The one that came from heaven. His name is Jesus. He's the healer. He's the redeemer. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the glorious one that holds the stars in his hand and walk among the seven candlestick. And he has the last word for this world because the kingdom of this world shall become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So embrace Jesus and be so thirsty for the Holy Spirit that you'll do anything to drink of the living water. And as you do, you will go out and share from your neighbors to the nation about Jesus. So it is my privilege, Brother John Luke. It is my privilege to talk with you today. But it is not enough for you to listen as to my living testimony. I'm a living witness of who Jesus is. But it's not enough that you listen to my testimony. You got to come and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and send you out so that you can make a difference in your generation. Because the time is now. This is the generation that will see the greatest move of the Holy Spirit in the history of mankind. So let us be a part of it. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Mel. Friends, we are not going to close without praying for you for the impartation. We do believe in impartation. What the Lord has done through Brother Mel in Timor and all his people with a true revival, he will do it through your own life. And I want to invite you right now to lift up both hands where you are to to receive this fire. And Brother Mel, if you can just pray for all these people, the students, but mainly also the viewers where there are thousands of people from all around the world. We do believe this revival will not just hit one village or one place. It will reach every nation of the world. So oh, yeah, yeah. from North Korea, Guatemala, or Switzerland, or, or Iceland, just raise your hands if you want to see this revival in your place, ready to preach the gospel like Brother Mel share. And Brother Mel, if you can just release this fire upon us, oh, yeah. this fire of revival. Hallelujah. Jesus, the baptizer of the Holy Ghost. He, the Savior that came from heaven, and he said, I will so rejoice to see this fire release. In the name of Jesus, you said, if you ask for bread, you will never receive stone. If you ask for the Holy Ghost, the Father will give you the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we just thank you right now. The Father has sent you. You have paid the price, and you are releasing your Holy Spirit right now. You, the baptized unto the Holy Ghost, release the fire upon each one of my friends that are listening right now. As John, Luke, and I pray for them. Let the fire come. Let your heart be filled with passion for Jesus and the Lord. And let the fire of God propel you like it did Moses. When Moses saw that fire, God, the great I am, spoke to him and said, go to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit fill my friend's heart. And they will go to the lost and tell them and embrace Jesus for his honor and glory. As I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, embrace Jesus, the Savior, the baptizer of the Holy Ghost, and let that fire burn in your heart from this moment on until Jesus comes back again. In Jesus' mighty name, I release the anointing and the impartation of the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. And by faith, we receive it, we feel it. It's amazing. 
Thanks so, so much, Brother Mel, for being with us today. You are such a blessing and such a source of inspiration seeing. How old are you, Brother Mel? 77. I want to tell all those who are watching, if you want to be in fire when you're going to be 77, the way Brother Mel is, <laughs> be sure to be full of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. The key. But thanks so, so much for being with us. Please pray for us, especially for those in Europe. The things is starting, but the battle is raging as well. But if we pray for each other, we're going to see the breakthrough and we're going to take the nations of the world. And like the Bible, like we read in Acts 2, is that in the last day, the people will call upon the Lord and they will be saved. Everyone will hear the gospel. That's for with the school of revival. We just launched worldwide the everyone initiative, which is not just to get filled with the Holy Spirit, but we believe now from these days until 2033, everyone on planet Earth will hear the gospel through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. So be sure to be part of what the Lord is doing worldwide. Uh, register to this school. You can follow us, us also through the social media. There is different things like we have miracles and healing services in different cities and nations. In Paris every month, we have a special revival and miracle healing service open to the non-saved and the people coming from the nations of the world. So be sure to be part of that. And tonight I want to finish with this. Uh, be sure to subscribe also to the YouTube channel because other series will come. We will have other lives the coming months and weeks. So be sure to connect to what the Lord is doing. And uh, uh, tonight I would love to give you the opportunity to sow for this revival. We really believe what the Lord gave us. If we give our two fishes and five loaves of bread, the Lord will multiply. Today, I want to give you the opportunity to bless this ministry financially. First, we want to bless back uh, Brother Mel. We're going to send him an offering. Everything that you are sowing today, we will send it to him directly. So be sure today to make a seed for the revival. Give your best seed. Uh, give what you have, and you have all the information uh, to the, the website of the page that's appearing on the screen. It will help us to do the different series, also to invest to other places. Uh, actually, if you come to this revival school, our plan is to multiply that to at least 10 other capital cities in Europe. So that's the reason we need your help and we give you this opportunity to be part of what the Lord is doing. Do it as a seed of revival for your own region by giving 50 or 100 euros or dollars or even a thousand. Uh, you can also become a partner of this ministry by giving every month an amount that the Lord put you on your heart and where you have the capacity to do it that will help us to preach the gospel to the world of the to the world to the nations of the world sorry but mainly tonight i invite you to be part of this revival by giving a financial gift that will bless brother mel and that will support this ministry to go forward Thanks so much for your generosity. Also, if you go to the website, we want to send you for free a weekly hope inspiration full of fire that myself, my son Ken is writing that will give you the energy and much more. You will find resources and things that we want to send to you. Brother Mel, I have just a practical question. Where can we buy your book like a Mike T. Wind? Oh, probably Amazon or Barnes & Noble or for the young ones here, just download Kindle, not the book, but you can read it in your iPad or whatever. It's not only it's cheaper, it's easier for this young generation. So go to Kindle. Okay, thank you so much, Brother Mel. Please give my love to your family and hope to see you very soon. And friends, uh, many blessings to you and may this fire of revival invade your life and your region. It's the beginning and we will help you to bring this fire to grow, to, uh, to develop it. And that's the reason we will have different speakers, different people who are going to help. So be sure to register, to like also the, the page so you have the, uh, all the information the coming months. Uh, many blessings to you. And we do believe this is the last days where the Holy Spirit is coming up and all flesh. God bless you. 
and see you very soon.